Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Origins of Doggos. Today we will be talking all about the Alaskan Malamute. I am joined here, as always, by my Borzoi co-host Esper, until she gets up and inevitably makes me sad at some point during this cast. I started saying that because the last time I said that, she stayed through that the entire thing, so we'll, we'll see if that holds true. The Malamute is a really interesting dog. It's another one of those basal breeds. We talked a little bit about that in a previous video, meaning the dog itself genetically is one of the originating breeds. It's kind of like saying, you know, it's the start, it's the root of a lot of other breeds. The Malamute itself is almost always, or not always, but is confused commonly with the Husky, uh, which it is not. The Malamute is a little bit larger. It's about 25 inches for the males, 23 inches for the females. They weigh anywhere, anywhere from 85 to 100 pounds pounds for the males. The females top up around 75 to 85 pounds. I'm going to put up the uh, metric version of those measurements too. We have some viewers that ask for some metric measurements. So, you know, cool. They're almost always uh, light gray. The shading, they're black. They have sable, sometimes red. Alaskan Malamutes though, you can tell the difference. A true Alaskan Malamute cannot have blue eyes. Now, being a basal breed, that means this dog has been around for a very, very long time. And there's some debate on whether or where the origin of this dog came from. In reading, some people believe this dog dates back to 12,000 to 20,000 years ago, uh, showing that the, the, this dog was probably the first dog ever to come to North America and has existed with the Inuit people for a very, very long time. Now, what we do know is that we can trace the origins of this species at least back to the Malamutes tribe of Alaska. Today, the tribe is known as the Kabuk people. I'm probably just botching these names. I apologize if I'm saying this wrong. Please, please let me know. So this is going to be from 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. They were used as, as what you would imagine, working dogs. They're very, very large. They're very absolutely adapted to the snow. They have an extra thick coat. They do extremely well in extremely cold climates. So let's start the timeline. We're now in the 1700s to 1800s. We are now going with the logs of Captain Cook and other European explorers that went to Alaska, and they were very impressed to find this very large, very strong, hardworking Alaskan dog that also got along with humans so well. Now, this is a very large dog. What you'll see as we go through the history, they never really made their transition to guard dogs as some of the other breeds have just because they have such an affinity to humans and they tend to be very welcoming. Now we go through the 1800s, 1896, we have the Klondike Gold Rush. The Malamute and other sled dogs became extremely valuable because you could take your sled dog out to remote areas and find gold much more easily. It said that the prospectors and the settlers would continuously breed Malamutes with other things looking for a better better dog for suiting for the purposes, suiting for going in the mountains and finding gold. They were so valued that it was $500 for one dog and $1,500 for one team. Now this is in $1,896. Accounting for inflation, maybe I'll do the little graphic, that is a lot of money. Um, even after the gold rush, the Alaskan Malamute was very, very valued as a freight dog. These dogs were pulling sleds and pulling goods all around the Alaskan tundra for a very long time. So now we're in, this is a very long period of time, and it's a very interesting fact, 1890s to 1963, the Alaskan Malamute was used as mail service in Alaska. So you can imagine you're getting your paper, not by a paper boy, but a, by a paper pup. That's a terrible joke. I, I'm going to leave it in there, whatever. So federal law, actually, they became so so important for the mail service delivery in Alaska and Northern Canada that there was a law that said you had to yield the right of way to an Alaskan Malamute. And the peak of this was in the 1910 to 1930s, but it lasted until 1963. Okay, back to the timeline. 1906, uh, the Alaskan Malamutes provided the transportation for Ernest de Coven Leffingwell's, Leffingwell's pioneering map of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in the Arctic coastline. Um, it's also speculated that Leffingwell uh, found the Prudhoe Bay and becomes, which would become one of the largest oil fields in North America. So use Malamutes to get out there. Don't blame them. Now we're in 1909, 1918. Uh, we start to see that this this breed is now being crossbred with a lot of stuff, and it kind of 
it starts to decay. Uh, people are starting to shift more to different dog breeds. You find that people are going more towards Siberian Huskies. They need something a little smaller, a little more compact. Uh, but you'll see what happens. 1908, uh, Siberian Huskies were not were just now brought in. So Siberian Huskies came in, took over the importance from the Malamute, and Malamute starts to decay. 1914 and 1918, uh, Alaskan Malamutes were called into service by the French Army. Uh, they had troops that would go to far-reaching outposts that were survived when, that were cut off by uh, that were cut off by nature. So the Malamutes kind of went further than when people could go. Um, the Nome Kennel Club shipped 450 Alaskan Malamutes to France, where dogs easily tackled the harsh conditions and moved needed supplies to save the day. So these dogs were moved over to France. Uh, nothing compared to Alaska. It was an easy, easy, easy thing for them. 1925, we get a really interesting event. This is called the Serum Run, also known as the Great Race of Mercy. And this is where they used Malamutes to transport a diphtheria antitoxin across the U.S. territory of Alaska by 20 mushers and 150 sled logs, 674 miles or 1,085 kilometers in five and a half days. They ended up saving an entire small town. Very interesting event. Now we, uh, we get to 1926. As I said, the, the breed was decaying. Now there's some renewed interest in bringing back the pure Malamute breed. Uh, 1926, 1920s, and 1930s, we had Malamutes were going out with Rear Admiral General Richard E. Byrd on his exploration of the South Pole. There's a theme here. You notice everybody's using Malamutes to go where human beings can't go in the snow. Um, we now get to World War II, and as I've noticed doing these videos, World War II seems to be the bane of a lot of dogs. A lot of dogs get you know nearly extinct or have huge hits to their population. The same is true with the Malamute, and they were so close to being destroyed that at the end of World War II, there were only 30 registered dogs left. So... <sighs> It's kind of sad. The Alaska, they tried to make the military dogs. And this comes back to what I was saying before, that they're just too friendly. They're not great military dogs. I mean, they're great family dogs, I mean, obviously. But if you're trying to, to make a purpose for them, they're not that great guard dogs. They just love people too much. Uh, 1950s, they actually started to find Malamutes that were in Europe, even though they thought they weren't there. 1960s, we get Roger Burgraff used Malamute teams to haul freight to climbers and explorers in Mount McKinley National Park in the interior of Alaska. Um, he also used Malamutes to patrol the park during the winter's months, so he actually got them using them as guard togs, probably not the best. In 1963, we get the last of the postal servant Malamutes, um, and we're going to jump forward in time here. So between 1963 and 19, or 2004, we kind of little bit of a lull for the for the breed but in 2004 they showed that um, Malamutes were actually a basal breed and this is where we come back and talk about how Malamutes are one of the most ancient breeds on the planet and they are genetically distinct from almost all other dog breeds uh, 2010 fairly recent the alaskan malamute becomes the official dog of alaska uh, 2013 we have another study that shows the malamute has a similar east asian origin but it's not clearly related to this greenland dog or the inuit sled dog it's a little bit different and we'll talk about them when we come to them through the videos but it, it is possible that they are mixed so now um we come to present day might have heard of Joe Henderson. He was the Alaskan Arctic Expeditions, and he used Malamutes to their full potential on remote expeditions to the Arctic and interior Alaska. If you remember Joe Henderson, or remember the movie White Fang, that is Alaskan Malamutes, and Joe Henderson worked on the movie. So very, very interesting stuff. So amazing working class, working breed, specialized for the snow, absolutely endurance to the max. These dogs could pull the most weight of um, of any of the sled dogs. And you find that, you know, the Huskies are used for the races, they might be a little faster, but when it came down to getting supplies, getting your mail, it was always the Alaskan Malamute that they turned to. So, such a cool breed. Next time, we're gonna be talking about the American Eskimo dog, a little bit different, also a snowy dog. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon, bye.